G'day everyone, Dan here. Welcome to North Queensland Barbecue and Brewing. Currently sitting in our uh, camper trailer here, the SUV camper, and I'm packing up, ready to go up to Pandanus Park, up in Princess Charlotte Bay, and uh, Cooktown for 10 days or so. We're leaving the little fella behind and me and the wife are heading up there. Anyway, the last video I did, I did uh, we did down at Funny Dunny, and I actually really wanted to do a video of the camper trailer as we head up there with the uh, blow-up annex and do a full review on it, but we're not going to take the blow-up annex on this one. What we're doing instead, we're just taking the travel annex again like we did down to Funny Dunny, and the reason being, and I'll show you this, is because the blow-up annex takes up a fair bit of room in the camper trailer. So we're going to rooftop the boat, and we're going to basically, we're carrying the engine on the back of the ute, we're carrying a lot of gear, well not a lot of gear, but enough, that this is going to weigh down. And we need the storage space. So unfortunately with, with the travel annex, uh, sorry, with the blow up annex, it does take up a lot of room inside the seating area inside the camper trailer. Now I haven't expanded this or anything, I've just opened it up, it's still all down relatively, so I can start packing gear. So I'll give you a look at what that blow up annex looks like when it's packed up and in the foot bay area. So basically here we've got our seating as you can see, and uh, the rest of it's there on the bed at the moment but that there is basically the blow up annex and that there the seats sit across the top here that all encloses so this pretty much half of this to here is our blow up annex and it's pretty heavy it must weigh probably 20 to 25 kilos if not a little bit more that's the travel annex just the tarp that zips up out the front so we're going to save ourselves a fair bit of space by leaving that behind so to give you an idea now, there's the table that sits in here, and that's the actual travel annex. It zips up, the poles all sit underneath where I'm sitting now, and it comes with a few guide ropes, that's it. That zips up, the three poles hold it up out the front, and you peg it down. Compared to all of that, so what you've got in here, you've got the major, this part here, you've got the part that blows up. In this other bag, which I did have the travel annex in, it has the flooring, and it has all the side walls and mosquito nets. So we're not going to take, or we might take up a mosquito net that sits on the awning on the ute over there, but that'll be it for mosquito netting and the mosquito netting that's on the camper trailer. So basically the rest of the tent poles for that little travel annex sit in here. And they're already packed in there. So what we've done now is I've essentially given myself a whole lot of space now for clothing or anything else we need to take. So yeah, basically we've saved all that space in here now, so I've now opened up this so we can use it for storage, extra storage, because I'm not loading the ute up with everything I'd usually take. We're rooftopping the boat, so I need to keep this as light as possible in case the police are out and weighing people, and that takes up a fair bit of weight itself. The, the bummer here we've got is you've got this drawer here that sits here, but it's got an air conditioning unit in it, and I don't know if you can quite see that, but yeah, we've got an air con unit, and it's reverse cycle, so... In the tropics, in summertime, you need this, and it's actually quite quite good to have in there um, when it's stinking hot. The benefit to this too, down south, is when it's freezing cold, it's reverse cycle, so you can heat up as well as cool down. So that's why we're only going with the travel annex on this trip. I'll keep going into more. This is the pretty much the start of the video. I'll go into more detail as we're going um, tomorrow. Once I'm fully packed, I'll show you the whole setup with the boat on it and everything like that. And then once we uh, set up up north in Pandanus, I'll um, show you everything there as well and in Cooktown. I'll go through this thing and give you a really good in-depth sort of look at this camper trailer. Alright, so this is all packed up and ready to go here now, this camper trailer that we've got, the uh, SUV camper, and uh, that's the boat on top, so that's how it's sitting now with the boat on top. So to get the boat on, we just had to winch up and over the back with the winch on the front of the ute. We, um, we had to basically turn the ute around and winch it up, which a bit annoying but we get it on everything's ready to go so yeah got the whole setup basically good to go for this camper trailer we'll go through that all later but yeah this is basically how it's all sitting now with the boat on all lashed down got the battery charging good to go so the electric motor for the boat's just sitting sitting under there tied down as well so we've managed to get that on and without the uh without the uh Blow up awning inside, we've got all our bags in there and got a fair bit of stuff inside there. So we haven't put water in yet and we haven't put water in the jerrys that sit on the front. We've got three jerrys, so they're all up. We can carry 160 litres. 
but uh, basically we're leaving that for the drive up to Cooktown so we're not carrying an extra 160 kilograms of weight we don't need so save a bit of fuel and we'll fill up in Cooktown ready for Pendennis Park. So I'll start off with the ute here. There's a part of this setup we've got up here now and I've already gone through with the trailer as it was packed up in the ute when it was all packed. We've taken the boat off, it's over there, but the ute setup basically has we've got a deep cycle battery under here running a 105 amp hour UASA battery under here. Under the bonnet it's a wet cell battery so it can run under there. And that's all hooked up to a DC to DC charger, one of the C-Tech ones under the bonnet, 25 amp I think it is. And that's running basically to the top of the roof there behind the awning. I've got a uh, 110 watt solar panel and that, that runs actually hardwired into the DC to DC charger in the cab of the ute. And I've got another plug in here through the bull bar which is running to a 200 watt solar panel on the ground. The reason I'm running so much solar into this at the moment, I'm just trying to pump that battery up because we're running the fridge on the back of the ute here. We're running it as a freezer so it's set to minus 18. Um, I've just the DC to DC charger here is just in a single cab, you don't have that, that space or anywhere. I could probably put it in here, but I'm actually running it just here, screwed in there. So it's running, obviously, from the alternator as well, running into there, and so is the solar panel. Runs through the firewall at the back and then under the foot, under the here, into there, all the wiring. So that gives us a fair bit of power just in the ute itself. And before we had the camper trailer, we were just running this fridge. So this is the King's 60 litre fridge. It's on just the Dun and Watson fridge side, it works really well. I've had it for five years, four and a half, five years. Used it a lot. Like I've, I've kept it on the back of the ute here, running at one or two degrees with stuff in it for weeks on end, just going to work. It stays on the alternator, charges the battery, and it just keeps going. So I'm actually really happy with it, considering it was a $600 fridge with a fridge cover. So usually what I do here is I keep the the solar panel, the one uh, 60 watt solar panel fold out one, and the little table over there that sits here. And I've actually got um, a mosquito net for this awning here. So the awning comes out, it's a three by three, once again, King's cheap. But it's probably four or five, five, even six years old now, this. And there's a full mosquito net that goes around it if we need it. We didn't need it last night, they weren't that bad. So I'm also running a toolbox, just a black one here. This, this one here, I keep all the like chemicals for the toilet, two-stroke engine oil, um, all the boat sort of accessories, tool bags, recovery kit, spanner sets, you know, socket sets, all the basic stuff I need to sort of get myself out of trouble if we are. Um, and that there is where I'm mounting the 20, 20 horsepower two-stroke onto the back here. I built this engine mount out of 40 by 40, you know, so don't look too closely at the welds. I did that myself, but it's pretty solid. So it's managed to come up from Townsville. It's done a couple other trips. And that engine just mounts on there and it gets it off the back of the boat. Obviously the boat sits on the trailer, on the camper, so this puts the weight on the back of here rather than having it on the trailer. So these are our two solar panels, our 200 watt one just on the ground fitting into the ute and I'll probably later on put it into the camper trailer to get some extra amps into there and our 160 watt which is running into directly into the camper trailer at the moment. The rest of the back of the ute taken up by the portable boat trailer basically. We've got the two wheels here and they're just the straps that came off the ute. It's a bit messy but that's the main part of the boat trailer, the two wheels and the rest of the boat trailer are in there. So that sort of does its thing. Um, here on this side, another toolbox, but this one here, I keep all our cooking gear in and different stuff like that doesn't want chemicals on it. So I've got, say for instance, I've got a little box in here that's full of electrical gear that we use. Throw right, this big pot here. That there's for boiling mud crabs in, but we can use it for other things. Three ring burner, you know, that sort of stuff, the wok. Um, we've actually got, we got that because that only uses 110 watts and we've got a 300 watt inverter that I can actually use this to back seal things if I need to by oh, turn the car on so the alternator's powering that. And like I said, oh, I've got the little cast iron pot here as well and cast iron cook. Most of the stuff's out now but if Louise just has a look in there. I've basically just got like that box full of different electrical components, you know, like a pump and MPPT controller, just anything I can need for the ute, the extension leads with different setups, Anderson plugs or 12 volt cigarette lighter sockets and stuff like that. So I actually built this here as well. This this is so the we had a 25 litre water container sitting on that side and a small and an esky here um, that we carried all comp, uh, condiments in and extra water. 
and 20 litres of petrol and 20 litres of diesel. That's obviously for the boat if we need it. We're probably not going to use it up in Princess Charlotte Bay because I don't want to tow the boat on that trailer to the bay from here where we are. But this drawer here, basically put whatever I want. I'm carrying all my fishing gear in it because I managed to fill it with all the fishing reels and different stuff. And if it's too windy, I probably won't actually get to the reef. So I might not have needed to bring my heavier gear. But anyway, that is what it is. So yeah, in here, nothing really special. Just a seat, pole at the back. And I've got two out of date flares there. They're, they're out of date, but they'll still work in case we need them as an emergency. The winch controller. You know, just dead random stuff and running a two-way. This, there's our little 300 watt inverter there. Mate gave it to me actually, and we use that. James O'Donoghue usually films Perfect. back home when we're doing barbecues. And yeah, we've got this, it's full of first aid gear. It was cheaper to buy everything, and then Louise put it in here. But we've got everything we need, first aid kit, and sits in there, so that's easily accessible. Um, another thing, what I've got here, I made up this. So this is uh, all the fishing rods sat in there. So that's obviously, they're all in there in these covers so that they're well protected. I mean, 150, 100 to $150 a rod. So they all sit in there nice and protected. So they're pretty good to go. That's, that's the basic ute set up. You know, I've got an under tool, under tray toolbox there. Just carry straps in, the um, jumper cables if I need them. And on the other side, I do have actually another 10, 15 litres of water capacity under here. So. It's just once again a bit more PVC pipe there with a tap on it so I can wash our hands and so not wasting water. But that's the ute. You see a lot of dual cab setups and I don't tend to see a lot of single cabs. So on this side, this is the SUV part of it now, so the SUV camper. This is the telly track. So we had this down at Funny Dunny in another video we did. But this I'll, I'll try to be a bit more detailed in this one of it. So obviously you've got we've got the boat loader. So you can use that for a boat. We've had the boat on there, it went fine. We used the winch off the ute to winch the boat up and over. So it's actually been pretty good. It's, the boat's a bit heavier, because I've got some timber in there that I use for the false floor. I could have ripped that out and I should have, but I use this on the trailer most as my personal, it's the only boat I've got. So obviously we've got the awnings out and they just set up like that to let that airflow through and there's heaps of airflow. And you've got the flyover as well, so it keeps the sun directly off you and it actually gets some more airflow through. So. It's actually quite cool in there, but it's still probably going to be 30 odd degrees today, but you know, at night time it was quite cool. So yeah, we've got these awnings set up. You can zip that up and actually roll it up, but we've got it set up in case we get some rain, which we haven't. We're carrying two max tracks, you know, probably need four, but at 250 bucks a set, you know, and they sit in here as well. So the water holders are all in here and you've got three three places for three drearies. We've taken them all out at the moment so we can fill up this because we've only got a hundred litre fuel, uh, water tank under here. So yeah, we've got three holders and two four and a half kilo um, gas cylinders there. One's about half full and the other's still completely full. So this has a positive air pressure system. So turn that on and that blows and it basically feeds air through the whole thing. And that's it there and blows air basically here and that creates positive pressure to stop all dust and shit getting into your into your um, system basically so not a bad idea it works it, it kept a lot of dust out of our fridge area kitchen area there's a little bit of dust inside the main body but not too much so we're running the this is actually a real prick to do by yourself so if you actually see this here you've got this chain so you've actually got to pull it down and hook it up to a link in the chain to hold it and if you buy it yourself, you have to use a ratchet back to something to actually ratchet it, pull it down, connect it, and then loosen the ratchet off. And I really, really don't like it that much, but it is good for what it is. With two people, you do it easy enough, but one person, it's just a bit, bit of a bastard. Because we've got this here, obviously we can't um, set the, the awning sort of poles out. So we just zip tie that to here and that keeps that open. This wall actually, this will unzip completely up and you can fold it all up and the other side as well. So you can actually have this completely open if you wanted to, where your couch and seating area is. I don't think that's, oh yeah it is. That's the aircon unit there. So that's your air conditioner. And we're not using it here because obviously we're running off solar. Underneath, there's actually a door that, it, it's in place at the moment, locked up, but it actually folds down. So when you use your aircon, you've got to fold that down and it goes from there. So here we got yeah, the batteries dual battery system. There's another plug in here for another Anderson plug. 
another solar panel, which I'll plug that in later to get these batteries up in the afternoon sun. Like I said, I'm just concentrating on getting the freezer battery all good, so that good is good to go. That's where you fill up your water, that's a key, and this here is where you can plug a hose into. So you've just got your connection there, put your connection in and plug a hose into that so you can run off a hose connection like at a caravan park. And we're running, like I said, 100 litres of water. So yeah, that's that's pretty much this side of the camper trailer. At the rear here, got the shower tent, but we've got one toolbox and one spare tyre. So we keep hose, the hose in there leads. Um, the blow up annex that comes with this, we're not running that at the moment, but we've got the pump for that in here. Funnel, so we can funnel. So make sure if you're filling up water out here from Jerry's, you've got a funnel, because you need one. It's really difficult, so you need to, we've got the funnel for that. Uh, just random bits and pieces, hammer peg, tent pegs, etc. The shower tent is actually really good. We really like it. Um, what we've got here set up in our shower tent, I, I actually have a piece of, um, a piece of ply and I've got a couple of rocks on it and that so that sits back and this if you're using this this is a drifter shower tray and you can see it hasn't collected much but on the very edge of the board if you have it so it's sitting flat this this here where the water drains out sits too high so I've actually put that down so there's a it's sitting right onto that plywood that I'm using here so just a bit of form ply and so at the edge it actually does drain all the water away except for a little bit there which is fine but Otherwise, if it's on flat ground, you'll end up having a pool of water. So that's how that drains, and I've made that set up. Running a Dometic um, toilet. That there pumps up and keeps air pressure in it. Um, so you can actually, you know, flush it and, and pump that up. This, we've had this for four years or so now as well. Starting, the seal's obviously starting to go somewhere. like So it does lose air over time, but it still holds pretty well. And that We only poo in that, basically because we don't have anywhere to dump our sewerage at the moment where we are, so we'll have to take that out and at a dump point dump it um, when we leave Pandanus Park. Um, what I've done in here, because there's no light, is I've put a little light switch in there, and that actually gives me some light in here. And we've got the shower handle. The shower handle hooks up to the gas system that came with this camper trailer. So the gas system's there. Um, had a bit of an accident with it, unfortunately, but it still works. There's a bit of a ding in it, but... It works quite well, it's actually quite good. The, the one thing I don't really, it's a bit annoying. Um, so, you can't really hook up. There's nowhere to actually just, this sits on, oh, as part of the camper trailer. There's a, um, yeah, if you come around here, Louise, have a look. There's a, a thing here, what I've done, is I've just put that over the top and wired it around this bottom bit of RHS here, so that it um, stays there on a nice, nice um, vertical sort of way of sitting. So it's nice and plumb, so upright, so it works. And that does, we don't have a problem with it now. But yeah, that, they could have actually thought of something to actually connect this up to. But I've worked it out. Sometimes I use zip ties now, I've just got the wire there permanently, so. Yeah, that's the hot water system. That, that there, so we'll come down here. And what you've got, you've got a couple of gas lines here. One gas line goes to the hot water system and there's connections here for the gas. And one goes to the stove. So you've got one that runs the stove. This one's obviously running the gas hot water system. You've got an in, uh, a hot water in, so this is obviously, there's a 100 litre water tank under here. So that goes out into the hot water system, this comes out and feeds the tap for the sink. And this one here is obviously the shower cable, so that, that's how you do it. Um, you can see just here, underneath there, you've got the 100, water, 100 litre water tank there. It's got the aluminium uh, checker plate protecting it. Um, pretty good suspension on it, both individual shock absorbers either side, the real heavy duty stuff, which you, you need for something like this. So yeah, the hot water system's really good. It's really easy to set up. Just plug all these in. These actually come out. I won't do it now, but they just you push that up and that pops right out. So all the cables are separate. Look, this, uh, it comes with a floor mat. It comes with a big like silver floor mat that actually comes in with the blow up annex. I'm, we're actually running this. This is the King's four drive super center, just ground mat. And I find it a lot easier. It lets water go through it. Um, whereas the other one, if, if it rains, it pools water. So we use this one instead. Um, it's just, yeah. The annex itself, um, the annex itself is quite quite good. We, you know, this is just the travel annex. And um, we've got everything pegged down fairly securely. So it's, um, if it does rain, you probably get a bit of pooling, but there's no, 
it's just providing shade. I wouldn't be using this if you were expecting rain. I would have bought the blow up annex, but being June, late June, up here on the top end, I don't think we're going to have that, that problem. So don't mind the bit of chicken or the fishing rods. That's just the frosting to load up the Abbey traps again. But this is our kitchen set up here. So you've got the sink. This is hot and cold. So we're able to run. I won't turn it on. We don't want to waste water, but we're able to run hot water and that press in, press out. And underneath, we've just got a bucket where it drains to. So that's our sink. The stove is obviously um, four burner. And there's actually little um, styrofoam things that sit in there to stop it all moving. This uh, cast iron pan is a good old King's one. I've had it for years, it's really good. So you're running everything, kettles and stuff like that. Whatever you want to run, but uh, we've got the space underneath. So knives, forks, spoons, enough space to store everything. This is what Louise really sold, Louise, on this camper trailer. It was just a kitchen setup. Under here is just storage. We keep a bit of stuff in, tea, towels and wipes and stuff like that. So that's where, that's basically the kitchen. And then we've got this bit of space here as well, so... There's plenty of space to work on here, and you've also got that over there. Bit of workspace there too. So we've got this here. We've got this here. So this, this here just opens up and it's just a bit of storage space. Keep lights in there, etc. Mosquito coils, bits and pieces. Um, covered in dust at the moment. But on the outside here, you've got two 12 volt outlets. So we're running this little fan, suction fan, if we do need it. Um, when you're cooking or whatever, you've actually got a bit of breeze because not that it's too bad here at the moment, but these little oscillating fans we got from um, J uh, JB Hi-Fi, no, what are J Car in Townsville. So um, Louise actually wanted two clip on ones, and I went in there, there was only two left, and one of them was like this, and I didn't look because I saw the first one, but we end up utilizing it here anyway. So, and there you got the switch for the light, there's a light here on the sink, so you've got that, and also. This here being the uh, drying rack for all the um, all the plates and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, inside. Actually, I'll finish off out here. So, this is our, our kitchen sort of area, storage space. We got the 95 litre dual zone uh, Evercool, which has been pretty good fridge. Actually, the only bummer is it's a bit too big for the space. So, to open this fridge up, you've got to open the back here. Yeah, this that opens up into sort of the pantry storage space here. And I actually usually have a towel sitting here for this reason, because this has just scratched the shit out of the inside here. And um, yeah, I'll have to get onto that. More fishing rods, just fishing gear everywhere, crab pots, fishing gear. Um, yeah, so you've got to have this open to open the fridge. But I mean, other fridges probably wouldn't be a problem, just we went with this 95 litre dual zone. So there's plenty of drawer space here. So you've got three of these drawers. You know, we've got our pots, pans, different cups and that sort of stuff, I think. They're all pretty much the same, I think, aren't they, Louise? Yeah. Yeah, so they're all the same then. One more drawer here as well, which once again gives us a bit of space for different things. Uh, so, and then in here, obviously that's that's the pantry. So you've got that drawer. So this, obviously, this first section's only about half of that to accommodate that drawer. This goes the full depth. Um, set the end here for, uh, I can't think why, but it, it steps up about here for some reason. Probably something in there that... I don't know about, but yeah, I don't know why that does that, but it steps in because there's nothing underneath there, so it's probably a bit of wasted space, to be honest with you, but there would be a reason they've done it. I don't know what it is, but anyway, there's plenty of storage space for food anyway, so it's pretty good. Next in the van, like we've got it all open at the moment, but the door here, uh, steps, they're a bit of a bugger to get up and down sometimes. Um, but it's really good that they're not on the inside of the door. Yeah, they're not on the inside. They, they sit up on the outside. So um, in here you've got you've got your control panel. So you've got your battery monitor there. Uh, you've got two USB ports. One's a one amp and one's a two point one amp. So we're just charging like the speaker up. A few different things. All the, so that turns the water pump on. You know these are your twelve volt outlet that turns it on for all your twelve volt outlets. You know your lights here and your audio to turn the radio on. So that doesn't even need to be on, we're not using it. Now uh, inside here, so we've got the couches, we've got a, a little bit of stuff in here, just our bags. But we've got our couch area here, so without having Eric with us, we're actually quite comfortable in here. This, I have just turned that off there, so. But these are the, the controllers, you've got two LED lights down these poles, same in the bed area. Um, and the couch is a pretty decent size. It converts into another bed, 
we didn't get the one that has the second bed that goes out from it because we've only got one child and he's the only one we're having. So you can't really store stuff under these seats. Under here, I pointed out, there's the aircon unit, so that's not really, you can't really utilize that. Under here, you can sort of put stuff in and I'll give you a quick look at this, but you've basically got, you've basically got um, that drawer or that little shelf that's out there. So there's the water pump, the radio. So you could put a little bit of stuff in there if you wished, but we're not using it. I don't see the point in trying to utilize that space for, for really what we're gonna get into it. Um, pretty pointless. On the other side as well, down over this side, you basically got the battery system. Um, I'll move this out of the way. So you basically got the battery system and uh, the charger where the 240 comes in. So once again, you actually do have a bit of space under here you could utilize if you wish to. Um, this is probably more, you get that out of the way. You've actually got, like I could put a backpack in there or something like that full of stuff or a med kit or whatever. And the back here, obviously there's no point. That's just access the free, uh, the kitchen slide goes in under the back seat. So you can access it once again, you can lift that up, but we're not using it. So we've got a couple of drawers. There is two drawers at the front here under the bed. So there's two of these can of Milton mangoes there, obviously. And then you've got two of these drawers. They're both the same size. So we've just got full of soda water and tonic water at the moment there. And, but yeah, they're, they're, you know, there's enough to get some clothing in there if you want. They're not massive, hence why we're not really using them. We're just using them out of our bags. So, and then this one here down the bottom accesses into where the tent poles and all that go. So you can get access from in there. We're running this, so uh, we're running this mosquito net. This actually comes up halfway and you can tuck it under the bed and leave it out completely. But uh, we're just using it because I can turn the light on at night in there and basically we're keeping the um, keeping the bugs out of our sleeping area. So, and mosquitoes, there's one there now. So that'll basically keep everything out. We're running Louise and I both have our own blankets. This is a Coleman sleeping bag. So the Coleman's are just, they're, they're freaking brilliant. Um, I love the things, they're so strong. They're about 120 to 150 bucks if you get them on special, but they beat any other sleeping bag, especially in the cold. They're just really good and they're wide. But yeah, that's a sleeping area. It's a similar sort of, we keep a fan, one of those clip on fans just inside there. There, so we can keep that. We can run two of them if we wanted, but we run the one, keep that zipped up. So that's the inside of the camper trailer. There's not really much to this. It's we got the little table here that we use. You know, we can put the laptop on. I've run the little inverter to do my, put my laptop on to do uni, university work and stuff like that in here, and run the aircon when we're in, when we've got 240. We're also running these. These are the XTM um, light sort of light bar. These things actually roll up. They're really flexible. But the XTM lights, we got them from uh, BCF. hundred dollars for the kit, so. They're the lights we're running, and I've got one split, so I've got four that wrap around the shower tent to give some ambient light and also light up the back of the, the area there. And the other six, because you get six of these LED light strips, are running in here. Um, I do have a set of Adventure Kings ones, but they just, they break real easy. I've got one left out of a light bar kit of four, and I'm running that on the tree from an extension lead I made up with a socket. This is actually a really good, there's Bulldog clips on one end, and there's a 12 volt cigarette socket right here. So that just goes onto my deep cycle battery. And I've got that light bar there just to light up our sort of eating area. And it's, it works, lights up enough just to light up this area here with the fire if we need it. But yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my money on another one of these. They, they snap, like they break right in here. And um, on there as well, like I think this one's barely held together, like it's still working, but the other three are dead. I've got a couple of orange ones as well that still work. But yeah, that XTM light kit has um, been really good and I haven't had an issue with it. I don't like the color of the white, but it's a remote control as well. So that's inside. Press the remote and it turns on, press it turns off. So if the remote dies, the kit's useless, but you can also have red light, amber light, like purple light. You can have a disco flashing sort of light set up if you want. It's obviously, uh, we can show you that actually. I'll, I'll insert a clip with nighttime and we'll <laughs> insert that in so you can see what it's like. But yeah. Okay, so a bit of a demo with these lights. Red, green, yellow, back to normal. 
you can also do so if I want to do something like say party lights yeah so if you want to have a disco out in the bush uh, these are probably your lights for you so a couple of the the little luxury items we've got, obviously we've got Louise's, um, this actually managed to sit in the box, it felt the box is under the camper trailer there. Um, that managed to fit inside the camper trailer with the two two chairs there, both me and Louise's chair. Uh, we fat the little table in there, this folded up and went in there. Both uh, our what bags. What else do we have? Both our bags. Both our bags. So we were able to fit sort of these sort of things, not that we're carrying too many luxury items, because we removed the blah up awning so we had that space so we weren't clogging up. The ute was full enough um, with all the extra stuff we bought. Not really stuff that was, it was all necessary stuff, you know, we needed it but because um, we're pretty remote. But this is Louise's um, hammock I bought her which at the time she didn't want but now she loves and won't get rid of it. Plenty of fishing gear, you got to have heat so that's why I've, I've literally got a dedicated, I know I run a barbecue channel but when I'm not barbecuing I'm fishing or shooting guns, it's, it's literally what I do down the rifle range shooting service rifle or fishing on the Horton. So that there is fishing gear. We kind of, that's a little table we carry. That it comes up and down. It's really handy. And we got the fireplace. This is a King's Adventure King's. Uh, and I bought this in a bundle with the, um, I'll talk about the barbecuing now, but I bought this with, with the uh, cast iron fry pan as a bundle. So we used this last night. We fried, we did a pizza. I'm going to do another video of Cherubim or hopefully Red Core video if we get it here. So we're we'll using that for that. So that's all set up, ready to go. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much our setup here. And I like it. Like I would have liked to have shown the. Um, and you got the river in the background. So I really would have liked to have. Um, I really would have liked to have shown the blow up annex as a part of this. And maybe I will in the future. If you'd like to see the blow up annex or a video with the blow up annex, just um, write a comment down below and like and subscribe. And I'll um, I'll be able to put one up when we actually use it when we're staying at a caravan park and not sort of up here in Cape York. Anyway guys, yeah, like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing here with the barbecuing and, and different camping and stuff. I'll try to do some more fishing videos and some other things as well, but yeah, just put down in the comments if you want anything different, you know, and, and you want to see a bit more of this sort of stuff as well, the camping and the fishing that we do and mud crabbing. And uh, until next time guys, take care.